Welcome back. This will be the, the last of these videos. Um, I misspoke. I said HR Diagram Simulator. This is the HR, the Hertzsprung Russell Diagram Explorer. It's an interactive, a flash interactive, um, and it allows us to play around with uh, plotting stars on an HR diagram, on a temperature luminosity plot or a color magnitude diagram, whatever uh, flavor you want to call it. Um, again, the vertical scale, absolute luminosity, uh, the scale is in powers of 10. The horizontal scale, um, temperature, um, we can change these. I can call this spectral type. Um, I can also call this color index, if you remember from last semester's black body curves uh, lab, where the color index, the B minus V, is another way you can uh, measure or plot the spectral type. So these are all synonymous values. It doesn't change anything about um, the diagram itself. Similarly, the y-axis scale, I can say absolute magnitude um, because that is connected to the luminosity. Um, but I'm gonna keep this as luminosity and temperature. Um, I will show the nearest and the brightest stars. So where stars um, that we know of uh, that we can plot on this, basically, I take a star's temperature and measure its absolute brightness and figure out where it'll uh, lie on this plot. And you can click around, you can move this X and you can see your sample star in comparison to the sun. So if I go down here, stars are gonna be bluish and tiny. If I go up here, stars are gonna be huge and red down here they'll be tiny and red and up here they will be big and blue so we got some general trends in this diagram stars are hotter on the left side cooler on the right side they are dimmer on the bottom brighter on the top and they are large or smaller smaller in the bottom left and larger in the upper right um, and so you could see all these sliders changing around as i move the cursor around and then what's being calculated right here based on the temperature and luminosity again using the Stefan Boltzmann law is the the radius of the star so interestingly again all the stars that we observe once we can get a handle on what their luminosity is and their surface temperature when we figure out where they fall in this plot this personality diagram for stars they all fall along this line or above it for the most part. I'm gonna show the luminosity classes. So the so-called dwarfs, and there's Roman numerals for these classes and names. Um, these names, they have somewhat of an archaic uh, origin. Um, what we really like to say is we call the green line the main sequence stars. And over 90% of all stars are gonna be populated along this line. Um, there will be stars up here in the giants. This is where stars are big. And then there are these white dwarfs. But again, I said the white dwarfs aren't really stars in the normal sense. They're not fusing. Um, one thing that stars, we know stars along the main sequence all share is they're all fusing hydrogen into helium. They might be doing it differently. So let's go back to where our sun is. Um, Stars down here and up to our sun are probably doing something more along the proton-proton chain kind of fusion. Stars up here are going to be doing that CNO cycle of fusion. Stars that are not on the main sequence up here are not fusing hydrogen into helium anymore. They have run out of enough hydrogen in their core to keep a sustained hydrogen fusion reaction going. So what happens is they start fusing helium into bigger elements. And what that does is that makes them a lot bigger. Um, not every star is going to proceed to this giant area um, near the end of its life, um, but some stars will. This so-called instability strip is where stars will start this process. Maybe a star that's on the main sequence is running out of some hydrogen in its core, and then the fusion rate goes down. And then the next thing is the star starts to collapse in a little bit. But as it collapses in, as it raises the temperature. And then as the temperature gets raised, maybe some of that helium that was produced from all those eons of fusing hydrogen to helium, maybe that helium can start fusing 
into bigger elements. And that releases a tremendous amount of energy, puffing the star up to somewhere further out. And then what happens is as it increases in size, temperatures inside go down and then the fusion stops and the star shrinks in size. And so this instability strip is really where stars are changing their mode of fusion and their sizes are actually changing on in a regular way. So this is exactly uh, what causes a lot of the regular pulsating variable stars. They're running out of um, hydrogen in their core and they're changing their fusion mode to something else. That's a dramatic simplification of it, but that is the basic idea.